Happy Aloha Friday and welcome to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii program. This is your host, Beatrice Cantelmo. Today, guest Masha Joya will tell us all about the theft of a nation, a reenacted dramatic play that she co-created with all the marvelous individuals in this community. This work was based on the book Nation Within from author Tom Kaufman. The Theft of a Nation premiered this year on July the 4th, 2017, in front of the Iolani Palace in Honolulu, Hawaii. There, several actors reenacted uh, the events that led to the proclamation of the existence of the Republic of Hawaii on July 4th of 1894, right in front of the Iolani Palace. In the name of American liberty, the liberty of people of the Hawaiian Kingdom was destroyed. And today we have the owner of talking more about that. Let's dive right in. Masha, welcome to our program. Aloha. Aloha. Thank you so much. Thank you. What an honor to have you here. Okay. <laughs> you know, like you always here as a you know, host, and you do a fabulous it, it job. It feels different to sit on this side, yes. I just forget about, are you nervous? <laughs> It would be all good. Come on, two Brazilians in a house. Yes, Brazil with a Z. Brazilian with Brazil with a Z and a Brazil with S. So, so you are from Brazil, Indiana. Indiana. Yes. And I'm from Brazil, the country of Brazil. So uh, you know, I think most people, without saying, you know, they all know about you. But for our viewers, you know, who are new perspectives on global justice, would you mind giving us a little blurb about uh, your background? You know, how did well, you end well, up here? Well, first of all, you yeah. can't do seventy-nine years in a little bit. It takes of seventy-nine course, years yeah. to do seventy-nine we'll years. We'll do several <laughs> series. The, the, the snap short, like the the one minute yeah, <laughs> can't do biography. That. I can't do that. Um, yeah, Brazil, Indiana, is a postage size, a stamp size, little place on Route uh, Forty, and most people say yes, I know where Brazil is, and yes. I know where Indiana is, but the two of them just doesn't make sense. No. Uh, but many, many years ago, um, all of the red bricks that you see in um, on the mainland, the buildings break, made of red brick, came from Brazil, Indiana, because it was Clay, Clay County, mm -hmm. and all of the bricks were made of, of the red clay, so that's how it got to be on the map. Mm -hmm. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. And uh, you know, have you ever had any problems uh, or a uh, funny story, like with a situation where you might have been mistaken oh, as a Brazilian national? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I went to school, uh, you know, as elementary school in lots of places, mm -hmm. and they send your transcript with you wherever you go, and so finally. 1956, May of 1956 to be exact, and I was getting ready to graduate from high school, and the principal called me in and said, well, don't you expect to graduate? I said, of course I do. Did I do something wrong? You know? And she says, oh, no, 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 she's a lovely, lovely lady. Mm -hmm. uh, that beautiful Republican look, you know, with the pink suit and the white hair, just just lovely. And she says, well, no, my dear. However, it says here that you were born in Brazil and we don't have naturalization papers for you. Oh, oh dear. My. <laughs> but I, I'm an American. I'm not a... <laughs> wow, amazing. But they dropped Indiana. Yeah. At but, some, you know, when you change so many schools in so many different countries and so many different states, there's no telling what happens. And so I'm sure somebody looked at it and said, it can't be right, can't be Indiana, and they just dropped it. And they got it corrected that way. Well, what I, you know, <laughs> uh, difficult about yet, you know, interesting story, you know, how you almost got into trouble uh, for something so minor uh, and, uh, you know, unbelievable. But here we are. So. Two Brazilians in a house, two activists. I hear you've been doing political activism as all long as life. you can walk. Yes. All and uh, I think part of the theft of a nation is perhaps, you know, 
uh, a big uh, way to do political activism in a very special manner. Well, uh, um, the story of the Hawaiians is no different than the story of any indigenous people anywhere mm -hmm. in the world. The colonizers the same. So it's the word, the music is the same, the words are different. Mm -hmm. And so it's easy to take up the cause mm -hmm. of in, in where you live. This is where I live. These are the people I live with. And their cause is as valid as anybody else's cause. And when you're an activist, that's what you do. Right. <laughs> yes. So what inspired you to say, you know what, I'm going to write a story, I'm going to collaborate with older people to be able to tell this like it really was? Well, I, in 1987, I began this trip with the Hawaiians. Um, never knowing that, you know, where, where it was going to lead. We took on um, a fight with the American government for transshipping chemical weapons mm -hmm. to Johnson Island. And that was the beginning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I was upset when I heard about it, and I went to the governor's office, because I had a friend in the governor's office, and I, you've got to do something, you've got to do something. You can't let them transship chemical weapons to Johnson Island. You just can't do that. And he said, well, Marcia, you're two years too late. And I said, what? What do you mean two, two years, years too late? late? Oh, the deal is done. Oh. He said, however, if it'll make you feel better, I know an attorney, a Hawaiian attorney, who loves these kinds of uh, things. So he gave me the name. Hayden Burgess, said, here, call this guy. And so I did. And... Um, so we took on this cause of transshipping the chemical weapons. And then I'm with him. He introduced me to a lot of people, of course, who came on board for this issue. And uh, so what happened is this organization started Sacred Times and Sacred Places. Mm -hmm. And we were all learning. And we went to different places that are sacred in Hawaii and to the Hawaiian people. And so it was really about this whole learning process. So it didn't just start two weeks ago. Of it started it didn't, didn't in all those years of learning, mm -hmm. of being a part of what was going on, of growing with the issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when Lynette called and two weeks before the event, said, we got to do it. I said, we do. <laughs> so we did. So let's uh, talk about what was the reenactment like? How did this all play uh, together on the 4th of July? I think for well, most of our viewers, well, the they get it here, but from uh, on the mainland uh, or abroad, uh, I think that there is a big disconnect between how uh, 4th of July is celebrated the mainland uh, and what has happened here? Well, of course not. Yeah. yeah. And what happened here is while the Americans were celebrating the 4th of July, um, Wednesday, July 4, 1894, the people who had been the uh, public safety, who declared themselves after the overthrow, and so they decided this was the time to declare the Republic. Now, they had been working on this since 1884. This wasn't something that happened overnight. They had been getting ready for this. And so it seemed that while all of the Americans were celebrating the 4th of July, that they could then, they had a constitutional convention, done in secret, of course, and then they decided that exactly at 8.30 a.m., the same time that the ships in the harbor would blow their whistles, their horns, to celebrate the 4th of July, they would declare themselves the Republic of, of Hawaii. Hawaii. You know, that is 
that's that is how it went. Now, of course, it took, you know, all of those years from 1843, uh, and who knows? I probably look before that, because the British and the Portuguese and all of the it's people that were sailing around the world, and the British especially, looking for perfect harbors, cities, islands, places with these wonderful harbors. Mm -hmm. So and Hawaii is and, a and prime the, harbor had per, space Yes, had world, perfect, yeah. yes. And if you're sailing around the world, you need these places to refuel, to get food, to do all these things. So many of the ironwood trees that you see here were planted by sailors because that was wood when they would come in that they could use to refuel. So it was all about this location, this fuel. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to 1898, um, at the time of the annexation, this is a couple of years later, when they were fighting the Spanish-American War, which is a misnomer, but we know that's the name. So to go from Cuba to the Philippines meant that you would go all the way around the Horn, right? You know that, yes, down around, the coast, yeah. yes. Come Watch all it, yeah. the way around yeah. and back up to um, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. That's a long trip. And then to the Philippines, mm -hmm. so if you can imagine that. So it became necessary mm -hmm. to have Hawaii as a fueling station, refueling station. So it's very not a, but not a very symbiotic necessity because in the name of American independence, uh, the kingdom of Hawaii and the people's uh, freedom were completely destroyed oh, of and course. sacrificed. Oh, that, there was and no thought given to that. And None. so how does the reenactment of that day uh, shaped up like, and I'm very curious to hear your feedback on that, but also the audience. How did they react? Tell us about the actors and actresses that were Well, let me, let me tell you, let me see if I have a, the actors were wonderful, you, you won't, including our own Jay. Yes, I heard that they, We had uh, Jay Fidel, Keone Dudley, mm -hmm. Stuart Feinberg, Henry Curtis, Peter Carlisle, ex-mayor, Jeff Pompadour, uh, Thomas Baldwin, Roger Epstein, and Scott Foster. All of them were prominent in the community. Figures in the community, yes. Uh, and they were all willing to take on the role as the bad guys. Oh my goodness. And uh, <laughs> did they give your feedback as they were saying their lines or seeing the reaction of the audience uh, uh, afterwards about how afterwards, they felt yes. <laughs> A couple of them said that they were humbled, they were honored, and probably for the first time they really understood what happened. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry that we can't see the pictures, but you can see them as they were leaving the steps and the audience is booing and hissing and whatnot. And you can see it in their body language, the trepidation with which they moved through. Uh, and the audience was, as you may suspect, 90% uh, Hawaiian. And it was their feeling of watching their nation being taken and, destroyed. and they honestly were so much a part of the action when Thomas Tom Kaufman introduced the Honorable J. Fidel somebody says he's not honorable he took my land and somebody else would yell and whatnot as he would introduce the so honorable the honorable oh the audience was totally into 
the drama. Right, so let's take a quick break and we're gonna uh, get back to that point. Just okay. a quick minute. Okay. Yes. Aloha, my name is Raya Salter and I'm the host of Power Up Hawaii, which you can see live at from 1 to 1.30 every Tuesday at thinktechhawaii.com and then later on YouTube. I am an energy attorney, clean energy advocate and community outreach specialist. And on Power Up Hawaii, we come together to talk about how can Hawaii walk towards a clean, renewable and just energy future. To do that, we talk to stakeholders all over the spectrum from clean energy technology folks to community groups to to politicians, to regulators, to the utility. So please join us Tuesdays at one o'clock for Power Up Hawaii. I just walked by and I said, what's happening guys? They told me they were making music. Welcome back to Perspectives on Global Justice Think Tech Hawaii program. This is Beatrice Contelmo and uh, we are back with Dia Masha <laughs> as we were just getting into the you know, gold uh, of this reenactment where 90% uh, of the audience were of Native Hawaiian descent. So this was very personal. Very personal. For them. Very personal for them. Very personal. And we stayed as close to the actual uh, documents okay. of in the book, the they left documents, all their letters, all their thoughts, absolutely intact. Oh my goodness! I didn't. So we didn't have to make that. up anything. <gasps> Everything was in the archives. So Tom Kaufman spent months. Yes. yes. Tom Kaufman spent months uh, right. reading all of this. I mean, they left it in perfect condition mm -hmm. so that we could take their words, their real words, right, um, and didn't have to rewrite, didn't have to make up anything. There it was. Mm -hmm. And one of the things at the end of the swearing in, uh, one of our, who is the bad guy? There's <laughs> so many bad guys there. Lauren Thurston <laughs> steps from behind Sanford Dole. Sanford Dole is now president. Lauren Thurston, who has really been manipulating this whole thing, steps from behind Sanford Dole. He takes down the Hawaiian flag. <gasps> and then they begin to cut it. And they cut it in strips. And they d gave it to all of the guys for their families as keepsakes. Oh my goodness, how disrespectful and so, cruel. Yes, uh, so I'm a drama queen. So I thought, okay, now how am I gonna get the flag down and cut the flag? Mm -hmm. So the director, who is a super, super guy. Who is the director of the And his name is uh, Monte Perez. Monte Perez. And so what we had to do was create a life-size paper Hawaiian flag and then stash it so that nobody could see it. So this is a complete surprise. So we bring down the flag and then take out the paper flag so the audience doesn't see the sleight of hand. So they don't realize that it's even a paper flag? No. No. They, no. they were and transported Peter, back to that And Peter time. Carlisle is standing there with the scissors, and he kept looking at me like, I can't he do didn't want, I can't do this. Yeah. I can't do this. And I kept saying, go, go. And he cut, and he cut. And then pretty soon he was into it, and he and Jay were, you know. People were horrified. The audience was horrified. They couldn't just, it, it was just too much watching them cut the flag, mm -hmm. even though it's paper. And even me, I cried, you know, and I knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. you and, know? and those tears are very necessary, and so are the emotions that they evoked uh, as a part of this act, a barbaric yeah. act, because... And, and the Queen says, 1,500 people are giving away my country. 
The people in my country do not want to be annexed to the United States, nor do the people of the United States want us. It was the work of 1,500 pe people, mostly Americans, who have settled in Hawaii. Of this number, those who are not native-born or American parentage, none of my people want the islands annexed. The population of the islands is 109,000. Of this number, 40,000 are native Hawaiians. The rest are Americans, Germans, Portuguese, Japanese, Chinese, English, and a small portion of other countries. The 1,500 Americans who are responsible for this was done and ruining our islands forever. And at that point, the chanters, these beautiful, beautiful women, begin to wail and cry and chant. And they lay prostrate on the ground in front of the queen and the palace. And they cried, and I cried, and the audience was just horrified. The audience was stunned while they did that. And then we began to sing Hawaii Aloha, and the crowd was just mesmerized. It was, it was so, I mean, I had visions, but not that, you know. I knew the audience would do whatever the audience did, mm -hmm. but it was fabulous just watching watching the emotions, watching, and the bad guys eased down off the steps of the palace, and then they, they were in the crowd watching, just sort of standing there mesmerized, you know, watching what was going on. That's very powerful. You know, being raised in Brazil most of my uh, formative years, I've always been a history buff. Uh, however, this type of information was not accessible uh, to us. I, I only knew so much, like maybe part of the British you know, uh, times in Hawaii, but not really what happened uh, when the Americans took over in the next uh, the United States, uh, Hawaii. So uh, unless you're here and you live here, you don't really understand the, the brutality in which this land was stripped over you know, from its people, and it was a kingdom. This is a kingdom with princesses and a king and the people. This was a prosperous, a progressive, and a, king, abundant place. King uh, David Kawakawa spoke seven languages. He was an attorney. Mm -hmm. He wore dress suits like any other, all the other men, and um, they treated him like he was some kind of a, what in the Queen's book she says what they did to my brother is just brutal. You know? And that what saddens me and I think um, I mean a big part you know of the Intake Hawaii program is uh, the gift that we are provided to our viewers to expose problems but also to link and make a bridge to potential solutions and I think one of the things that's very valuable about history, not only the knowledge but also the reenactment, uh, is that people can start creating a more accurate sentiment and a different shift, a different kind of, of, of awareness about what has happened then. Because we're talking 1894, but this is 2017, we still got issues. We do. And the, the people of Hawaii, and the native Hawaii especially, and the, and the Pacific Islanders still uh, are struggling. And so my question for you, I mean, this is an amazing gift, uh, not only um, you know, to all of us who live here, but for the world. What are the plans that you may have moving forward to Every, continue to share this? This information has to be disseminated. Everybody that was in the reenactment has said, let's do it again. And uh, warts and all, all the mistakes, mm -hmm. everything, let's just do it again. Um, I called on what I call my crew. And these are the people I call on for everything. Right. And they just went right to work and made it happen. Uh, I, there's no way to 
to say thank you to all the people that, like I said, I call on, regardless of what it is, mm -hmm. you know, I call them. And they are just wonderful about making things happen. And when we got there, it was 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, and everybody went to work like, okay, let's do this, 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 this. You know, I had dr drawn a diagram, mm -hmm. and everybody, we did nine versions of the script, and everybody did what they needed to they do. do, yes. Yeah. But how do we, I mean, that's the part of the intention. Do you have, a, I know that the intention is there to well, be able to do December it again. December 28th. December 28th is the next day. Is the next. But that one is in 19, I mean, 1891. And it is all Hawaiian because there was an election in 1892, February 1892. Mm -hmm. And this was part of the getting ready for to take the land, right? And all of this getting, all, putting pieces. So there was this election because the, the crown at that time, the kingdom, uh, was like Britain with a parliamentary. Thing. And so the piece on 1891 is the Hawaiians who understand what is going on and it is their meeting to talk about their plans and how to deal with what they can see is going to happen. Mm -hmm. wow. So that's December 28, mm -hmm. uh, 1891. Yes. Yeah. So um, I can't believe how quickly this program <laughs> came to an end. I could hear you for hours. Thank you so much for sharing such a you know important, uh, difficult, and yet uh, uh, wonderful um, gift you know not only for our community but you know for the world too. I think that indigenous people's rights you know uh, are so um, misunderstood uh, and and uh, there, there has not been any reivindication and no spirit of uh, reconciliation. You know, we cannot reconcile without recognizing the damages and creating spaces also uh, for local people to thrive as well. You know, having the proper funding allocated for education, access to services, housing, but also their pride. And I don't know what is it that you need uh, in terms of uh, support in order to get this reenactment uh, playing in schools, universities, and around the Send country. Checks. Okay, so <laughs> I will, you know, we'll Send checks. <laughs> in, in six months, I'm going to invite you again. My, my challenge for you, for my <laughs> invitation, and to those who are part of this, either as crew, but also um, in the cast, you know, but the audience is to get a fundraising and to get a system in place to be able to get uh, the reenactment happening on a more regular basis. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Aloha, my dear. Aloha. Aloha. Well, and that concludes uh, today's program. And uh, thank you so much for listening. And uh, wonderful, wonderful, happy Aloha Friday. And uh, we hope.